Okay, before we even get into the video, I'd like to pause this right here because this is actually a great example of what's going to happen today. Um, today I am going to run through my process of how I animate in Procreate. That's how I made this whole uh, intro title. So if you'd like one of these intro animations for your own YouTube channel or for anything else for that matter, um, my email is in the description and you can email me and we can talk about your ideas and some prices and stuff. Or, if you have your own iPad, you can learn how to do it yourself in this video. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that I do is open Procreate, obviously. Um, and I am going to make a canvas that is uh, 1920 by 1080 pixels. And then you're going to, once you've opened the file, you're going to switch on the animation assist in the little tools panel in Procreate, and that brings up this timeline. Um, so the way the animation works in Procreate is that each layer is its own frame, or if you group several layers together, the group itself is the frame. So you can have um, separate layers available to edit on the same frame. So the animation that I'm going to do today is like a pirate themed animation. So it's going to have this little ship and it's going to be a ship in the bottle and there's going to be a sword. And then it's going to have this wax seal at the end. Yeah, it's going to be cool. So I drew all of these thumbnails out on my sketchbook first and then I'm going to photograph them with my iPad. Uh, I don't photograph each frame individually, I just photograph the whole page and then I separate all of the little thumbnails onto their own layer. So you will need to individually resize each image and if you've done them in the wrong order you'll need to reorder them as well because I think I did that on this one by accident. But yeah it doesn't take too long. You can also change the onion skin settings in uh, the settings button panel um, on the timeline at the bottom and it gives you the option to change how many frames before and after you can see and the opacity as well. I usually just have it on one frame so you see the frame before and after the one that I'm on and I usually put the opacity between 20 and 50% depending on what I need it for. So yeah, I've got my rough animatic. Um, so next I'm going to roughly design my ship because the next thing to do is to do the roughs. Um, so I got some reference images that I put on my file that I can just kind of reference while I design a little bit better than my really shitty thumbnails. So yeah, I'm just gonna roughly outline my ship and then I'm going to... Basically my plan is to just duplicate the same ship over and over again and transform it slightly so it looks like it's bobbing on the waves. Um, this way I can put a little bit more detail into the ship's design because I won't have to redraw it on every single frame. I can just uh, copy and paste it. And because uh, I'm going to group all of my layers together, as you can see here, I've grouped the rough thumbnail and the reference images together so that they're all in one frame. And I'm going to draw over them. So because you can have all of these different layers on the same frame, I'm just going to, um, once I've finished my ship, I think I'm just going to merge all the layers together and then I'll have my ship on one layer and I can just duplicate that layer into every group that will make a frame. I know this is confusing. Um, it's a lot easier when you do it yourself and you kind of get into the rhythm of it. Yeah, once you get your head around it, you, you're golden. You can do anything. So I'm um, designing my ship here. I'm just going to do the outline. I'm not going to put any colouring or anything into it. Now I'm going to add some rough animation of the waves because for this bit of the animation, I just want it to look like the ship is bobbing on the waves. Um, so it's going to be quite a slow start to the actual movement. And yeah, so I'm going to separate the waves into three three layers of depth. I think there is an actual word for it, but I can't remember it right now. So I'm going to separate them into three layers. So I'm going to have the foreground, the midground, and the background. And the ship is itself is going to sit between the midground and the foreground. And I'm going to see how that looks. Um, so the, uh, it's a lot easier if you change the colors of your different layers. Um, 
I always use primary colours because I always, always have them as like recently used. And yeah, as, as a, like a tip, it's always so you remember which layer is which. Um, I always use the coldest colours for the most background layers and the warmest colours for the, the layers that are the most in the foreground just because that's how perspective works as well and colour theory. So it, it just it's an easy way for me to remember when I look at it. So I'm transforming the ship and rotating it and transforming, transforming it slightly so it looks like it's bobbing and I'm also doing the same with the waves. The front and back waves are going to move to the right while the middle wave moves moves to the left just uh it makes it look a bit more natural and wavy um so i'm going to transform the same layer pretty much over and over again and then uh, at the end if i need to i'm just going to hand draw a few more in with the onion skins so that they match up and it does a complete loop hopefully seamlessly and yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing now. I'm gonna duplicate all of the layers I've done and I'm gonna organize them so that they're in the right order again. It's a good thing to name your layers for this reason because once you duplicate the layer, it's an exact name duplicate. It's not like on Photoshop when it says like layer one copy. If you duplicate a layer that says layer one, it will just say layer one on the duplicate. So yeah, uh, I think the whole cycle was about 12 frames long and I just duplicated that so that for this next bit I don't have to redraw the ship bobbing on the waves and I don't have to make the ship just stand still, it looks like it's still in a bit of movement. So um, the ship itself is going to, the camera is going to zoom out from the ship and then we find out that the ship's actually in a little bottle. So yeah, I'm just going to draw in some more roughs of uh, my ideas, I might develop some along the way. Um, and we'll just, we'll see how my, my roughs go. Okay, so now that I've done all my roughs, it's time to go in and do some cleanup. Um, you can see here, this is what the rough animation looks like. There, There's a lot of things missing because, again, it's very rough. But um, yeah, at the end it says hire me. I did change that at the end because, um, although I thought it was really funny, uh, I thought having my name on it would be more uh, useful when I uh, self-advertise, you know? <laughs> The sentiment's all there though. Please hire me if you can. Okay, so now I'm going to do some cleanup for my ship design. Um, it's best to just do like one frame completely first so that you get an idea of how it looks like. In the biz, we call that a vertical slice. Nom nom nom. So yeah, I'm gonna make a vertical slice or a screen test or whatever you wanna call it, just so I know that I like my ship. Um, so I know my ship uses quite a lot of layers. I'm gonna group them all and merge them once I'm happy with them. Cause again, it's Procreate. So there is quite a hefty restriction to how many layers you can actually have. So you do have to be economical. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with my little ship. I have a, a palette already picked out. So I just had to slot the colors in where they look good. And now I'm going to duplicate the ship and group them with the respective rough layer so the roughs act as a guide as where the where the clean bit needs to go i can also tighten up some movement if i think it's not working right and yeah it's just an all around a good second go at fixing all of my mistakes um another thing i did with the ship is i did three different versions of it and uh, the three different versions are just um like the shape of the wave that comes up at the bottom um so that way, again, you have like another element of making it look like it's actually on water. 
So yeah, and now I'm just gonna clean up the rest of it as well. Um, so after the ship is on the waves, we're gonna have it zoom out to being this little bottle. So I'm gonna clean that up and see how that goes.
Okay, so the cleanup is pretty much done. I just have a few little scenes to add on at the end, a few little cleanup things to do. I'm gonna quickly run through the animation frame by frame to see if there's anything that I've missed or anything that's out of place. Um, and then I will play the full animation for you. Okay, so it looked pretty good. Um, I'm just gonna play it a couple more times while I wrap up my thoughts. As you can see, I put my name at the end instead of hire me. I think that was a good decision overall. Also, I noticed that the colors didn't export as vivid as I would like, but uh, I'm sure there's a way that I can fix that in post. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly run through what I've actually done on this animation. I think I've finished it now. I changed a couple of things last minute. Um, but yeah, I think I'm done now. Also, sorry if the audio is bad on this part of the video, I'm just using my camera. Um, so let's have a look. Now, a lot of um, the layers that I did, um, I had to merge because I was running out of layers. And a lot of these are duplicated as well. So if we look in the layers, you can see that these are all just flat images now, but they used to be on... Uh, four different layers because I had the front wave, middle wave, back wave, and then the ship. And the ship I just duplicated over and over again and like transformed it little by little. So I didn't have to redraw that a lot. I did do all of the waves by hand though. Um, so I did one whole loop of the ship, and I think that was 12 frames. And then I just duplicated the frames again so that it would look like a second wave. And it was at the end of that first one where the bottle came in around the sides where I started to transform it to make it smaller. And then I duplicated the the whole wave again to the whole cycle. The wave cycle, I guess I call it. The whole cycle again so that um, it would look like it's like still on the ocean. I didn't want it to just stop while I shrank it. Yeah, and obviously the... Uh, it didn't take 12 frames to get from here to here. It took like, how many was it? One, two, three, four, five. That was five frames where it shrank. So obviously a lot of the end I needed to be the exact same size and to transform multiple things at the same time, you go onto your layers, You, the highlighted one is the one that you're on right now. And then you can select multiple by just sliding to the right and then you can uh, transform them all together so those are all in the same place now there we go undid that uh, so that's what i did with the ship um and it's kind of what i did with the bottle as well um again these all used to be on separate layers um the way that layers work in procreate is that uh, each group is a frame so this would count as a frame, but in actual fact, it's got um, the the ship and the water in there, and then it's got the the bottle, which is all of these. Um, I've put like a gradient behind the bottle to make it look more natural, and then I've also got this, which is like the centerpiece of the bottle. So um, it just gives it that ring around the edge so it looks like it's in glass or kind of it's not a great <laughs> illustration it was a very quick animation that I did and then I've also got the, the cork here that pops out and yeah it's just handy to have these kind of things on different layers so that I can recolor them because a lot of the time what I do is you put it on alpha lock and then I just can't, can't speak today I can just color wherever I want within that shape I guess um and yeah, I liked, uh, I added quite a few gradients in this one, so that came in useful. Um, so yeah, and then I, again, the bottle was just duplicated and transformed on each frame. Um, so it probably is a bit blurry in a few of these last ones, but it moves so fast that you don't really notice, and I wasn't that precious about it. Um, but if this was like, for something that actually needed to be good, um, I would probably just go in and clean that up. Oh, another thing. Um, this background layer I have is just a gradient. Um, 
I might have just shown this at the beginning of the video, but it's the very first layer. Well, the very bottom layer on all of my in my layers panel. Um, and you can make it a background by just selecting it and uh, switching the on off thing. Um, and this just saved a few layers because instead of having the background layer in each group that I was making, um, I could just put one frame at the very beginning. However, I did change the background color halfway through because um, I made it look like it was in this little ball. So I had to add a background layer to all of these frames. But I thought this would be, I thought this would take up less time than it actually did. So I don't really know if it saved that many layers in the, lo in the long run, but it's how I did. So yeah, and then it goes, I'm just gonna close all of these groups. Okay, so then it went into this like water splodge. Um, this was just like classic morphing. Kind of turns into a blob. And it comes back up from the blob and it turns into a sword. I was actually quite proud of this bit. I think I should have made it last a little bit longer in the actual animation, but yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, so I made it cutlass. And then, again, this was just duplicated and transformed. And then it makes two swords. And again, this was just duplicated, transformed, and then flipped. Um, and then I added all of the like little gooey bits to make it look like they were coming apart. I just thought it looked cool. It doesn't really make sense, but I thought it looked cool. Um, and then we get into this bit. So originally I wanted this little spot to be darker than the background, but because I made the background darker sooner than I expected, it didn't really work, but I just rolled with it. I couldn't really be asked to rethink my whole strategy. So this was originally meant to symbolize like the black spot, because I went with this whole pirate theme. Um, so we have like the black spot bleeding out, only now it's the teal spot, because uh, we gotta keep up that aesthetic, I guess. Um, so yeah, again, this is just like another background color that I used, and these frames are just solid blue. And then I'm gonna shrink this so you can see the corner. So then we have um, like the scroll unraveling. Again, most of this was duplicated and transformed so that um, this rolled up bit at the end stays a, a consistent size um, until the end of the it like unravels. Um, yeah, this bit wasn't as impressive as I was hoping, because again, I thought that the background would be dark by this point. I don't know, really shows how much thought I put into it. I really tried, okay? So then we have this. Um, it was meant to be, uh, like a wax stamp. Uh, and it still is, but I had to change the color as colors around because they didn't kind of match the background. Originally this, the wax was going to be this dark red. And the stamp was going to be the, the lighter pink. But um, the stamp didn't look right when it stamped down, so I changed it. Maybe I'll change it back, I don't know. Um, but yeah, we have this stamp come in. Oh, that's a group within a group, but the, the main group is still the one that shows up on the frame rate. This is just a way to keep everything together and I can make it invisible if I need to. And then it, it's blute. And then again, the um, the stamp was one that I duplicated and transformed again. So it was this it's the same angle. I just make it larger and smaller depending on how close the camera is because I wanted it to come like down this way. So you see in the camera, it's like bigger here because it's closer to the frame, and then it goes smaller down here. But yeah, it's only like three frames, so again, it doesn't really matter if it's just a little bit blurry on the edges. And then I added my name on it. And this is why I kind of changed the color, because when it was red, I thought it looked a bit harsh. You couldn't really read it that well. Um, I don't know. I'm still not sure about it. When I put it in the video, I might have changed it again, but this is what it is. As you can see, it's a, it's a very simple animation, but I'm still quite you know, pleased with it. It's, you know, small and morphy and cute. 
and it's, you know, it's good. And I didn't spend that long a time doing it because I was efficient with my time and duplicating layers so I didn't have to make more work for myself. Um, but yeah, it was fun. So, <laughs> in the spirit of self-advertisement, if you would like a little animation like this for your YouTube intro or whatever, whatever small little thing you need to advertise, then my email is down in the description, hit me up and we can talk about commissioning one. Like I said, they don't take that long to do, so they will be a very reasonable price. And yeah, so yeah, that's all for now and I guess I will see you around in the next one.